I would say that to answer this question, I need two videos. In this video, we're gonna talk about how Jody became this, this beautiful being, this glorious little purple creature that breaks hearts, raises boners. And then in the other video, we're gonna talk about how Jody came to be known as Jody. You know, names. What's in the name? So I guess there's few parts to the story because obviously there's the makeup slash drag part, there's the music part, and there is my marvelous personality part, but I guess all of them can be told in the same story because they just kind of intertwine together. After all, this is all about my life, so why the hell would it not intertwine together? So to start off, I was always very passionate about music. I was not... that's a lie. I became passionate about music at the ripe age of 13 when I discovered the you know, this indie singer called Lady Gaga. She was in her Born This Way era, so I believe the first song of hers that I was like really, really hooked into was Mary Tonight. That was the shit. I would just just listen to it nonstop. It was it was crazy. I would I remember we went on a trip in middle school, that was like my first year of middle school, so I didn't know anybody and went through some shit, so I didn't make friends until the third year of middle school. That's a story for a whole other episode, baby. And I remember vividly just grabbing my friend's phone because I didn't even have a smartphone back then, just playing that one song on um, on repeat and just sitting in the corridor. I just listened to what, what one bloody song like that because I didn't want other kids to judge me but when they went to the corridor themselves and saw me just sitting like that by myself they still judged me because kids are judgmental fucking bitches so anyway Gaga did help me a lot with my feelings of depression with my feelings of like figuring out I might be gay I knew I'm gay at that point but Gaga helped me figure out I was like oh baby we're born this way so I was fine with that I was more worried about being bullied from other kids bullying honey and I didn't singing to myself but it wasn't really until I was 17 and in my first year of high school when I joined a choir during one of the choir sessions I was asked to do a little bit of a solo to a song that was popular in my country and I did the solo of it while the other people were doing the the instrumental parts people really enjoyed it and was like oh my god you're so good at that so that kind of did main thing oh my god maybe I am like, maybe that's something I, I could try to do a little bit more. Especially since seeing Gaga, I already, you know, I was already a fan of Gaga for years at that point. And just seeing the things she could do while on stage. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about, you know, singing and dancing. That's fucking great. But being on the stage and inspire people by being on the stage and being her unapologetic self, not giving a fuck, being queer, gay, sexy, powerful woman, it does give you this empowerment. That's also what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how, but then I was, I figured out I can kind of sing, so I was like, maybe I should try that. Move forward to a year later when I moved into UK to live with my family and join a school, and then I figured out that in UK, at age of 16, you can actually study singing. Not like study, study, they don't teach you anything about singing, but you can actually do music with singing. So I was like, great, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try that. People still said, oh, you, you sound great, which was kind of a lie if I thought about it. Until I finally managed to get into ACM in Guildford. And that was a game changer for me, because finally I was at school when they're gonna teach me singing. Finally, I was independent. I was learning to be independent, which I love my family, but they were not the most supportive of me in general when I was living with them. So thank God for being independent, bitch. You know, just saying, just, you know, no, no hard feelings, but come on. It's like, honey, what are you doing? So for those three years, I managed to actually, you know, learn properly how to sing and be the marvelous vocalist that I am today. I managed to learn how to perform. I managed to finally open up to people because throughout teenage years, I didn't speak to anybody. I was like too shy. I was way too like nervous. I was just, just way too anxious. Like my anxiety and my depression. Ooh, honey, you don't want to hear about that. Let's be honest. And when I finally got into university, I had to be like, okay, this is it. Like, I don't know anybody, nobody knows me. This is my chance to make friends and to finally like try to work on yourself. And I did, I worked so bloody hard, not just as a musician, but also just as a person to evolve. I'm very grateful for the people I met on my journey too, because without them, I wouldn't be who I am today. I am in drag because of one of my friends who um, decided one day to introduce me to Drag Race. 
and put me in drag herself. So I am very grateful for that because I found another thing that I am passionate about and that I could be good at. It's it's crazy to think what life can bring to you, really. So that's singing, really. Uh, I, I, I did move into to Brighton a year ago after graduating and since then I've been just doing gigs on open mics um, because for most of the time I've been spending in Brighton there was this thing called COVID-19 fucking where everything was closed because of the lockdowns and restrictions and everything opened up in the last few months so now I'm able to perform and I'm fucking happy about this. Now about the dragon makeup. As I said before, I had this friend who was huge on makeup. One day we decided to hang out and because she knows I'm gay and because I was a little bit sassy already at that point, she says, girl, you need to watch Drag Race and I'm gonna, you know, do some makeup on you. So we did that. I was really hooked on Drag Race. It is like, it's just, it's just so magical because we have those men who can just transform and be so, so fabulous and sassy and just, just don't give a shit. So that did change something in me. And then she did my makeup and I looked marvelous and I was like, I want to look like that, but I want to do it myself. Just having those abilities. So after that, I remember just starting out with Collection, which is probably the cheapest brand, maybe next to MUA, except MUA does have some good products actually. <laughs> Not calling for any brand, but let's be honest. I think I literally started with just eyeshadow and foundation. I just put... I remember putting just foundation on, a little bit of grey eyeshadow, all from collection. I thought I was the shit. I thought I was like the, the most beautiful person in the world. Honey, delusion. Delusion. But yeah, apart from that, I don't think there's much to be said. I was doing makeup, I was practicing for the past few years. There's a story I'm gonna say in another episode <laughs> about my drag, about my debut in drag, but yeah, that's that's that. So, you know, this is just how Jody came to be, more or less. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, just give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, so you don't miss a thing, and I will see y'all my snowflakes in the next episode. Ciao!